Good, good morning, members. We have a quorum. Um, we've appoint, uh, reached the appointed hour meeting is called to order. There are three papers to be discussed today. Before the meeting, the administration has provided ECI 2014-15 number two and ECI 2014-15 number three, uh, which are information papers. They are circulated among uh, members. The paper provides the uh, changes in the establishment of the directorate grade since 2002 and also the changes arising from the two uh, four items uh, to be discussed today. I'd like to remind members that if they have any direct or indirect pecuniary interest on the um, items to be discussed today, they have to declare the interest according to uh, ROP 83A before they speak and disclose the details. I also would like to draw members' attention to um, the voting by members under direct and pecuniary interest according to ROP 84. Agenda item number one, um, late um, application for membership. Before we discuss the ESC uh, establishment proposals, I would like to ask members to consider the application by Mr. Chen, Albert Chen, for joining the ESC. Um, the paper or the, the letter of application was given to members in paper ESC 59-13-14, dated the 9th of June. According to 3B of the procedure of the ESC, the chairman may agree to accept late membership on grounds of indisposition or absence from Hong Kong. A request for late membership on grounds other than indisposition or absence from Hong Kong um, shall put shall be put to the subcommittee. The subcommittee shall accept such applications only when sufficient grounds have been provided. Ms. Albert Chen, would you please give your grounds for joining this subcommittee? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Chairman, as you all know, Mr. Leung Ko Hong a few days ago was um, sentenced uh, to imprisonment immediately for four weeks. In terms of uh, ideology, in terms of social policy, uh, the uh, People's Power and the LSD are rather close to each other. Uh, the People's Power and also the LSD uh, participate in some committees and subcommittees, um, basically uh, in various uh, panels and committees. Um, three of us joined different committees and panels. For example, I'm a member of the PWSC, and Mr. Leung Kok Hong is in the is a member of the ESC to a certain extent at uh, different. Um, Meetings. There are representatives of the uh, progressive Democrats or those who are described by some members of public, uh, the radicals. They they are represented by us. Now, when Mr. Leung Ko Hong is uh, sentenced to jail, the People's Power is of the way that we should find a way to participate in this subcommittee. So the progressive uh, Democratic voice will not be silent. Uh, because of the imprisonment of Mr. Leung Kok Hong. Therefore, I made the application. As for the grounds for application, uh, whether other members, um, the, the grounds whether members uh, don't join or apply to join the subcommittee. In fact, before the administration puts the application to the FC, um, it has to go through the ESC or the PWSC. If it is for increasing establishment, it's by this committee. As for PWSC, millions of dollars, uh, projects of millions of dollars have to be put uh, before the PWSC. Now, uh, James Tian, not on the ground of indisposition or not on the ground of absence from Hong Kong, he was of the view that he should participate in that subcommittee. He made the application, and there was no objection, and his proposal was accepted, or his application was accepted. From 1991 until now, as far as I can recall, members, for one reason or another, not because of indecision or not because of absence from Hong Kong, applied for late um, 
joining of uh, ESC, um, PWSC panels, or um, bills committees, and their application has never been rejected. But because of the change in political climate with the white paper by the central government, there's a change in the political ecology in Hong Kong, whether we are going to make a new record, it's up to you. The council uh, should listen to uh, the views of representatives of a certain ideology. And if their view is silent, that will be very tragic. The LSD and the People's Power have uh, uh, won in the last election, uh, won um, about 12 percent of the votes. I represent the progressive Democrats. If you um, rejected my reject my application, you have silenced the view of more than 10 percent of the voters. That's an insult to demo democracy, and that is. Also uh, unforgivable for um, um, to those who um, belong to the progressive Democrats as on political grounds. Mr. Uh, um, hands are steady. Mr. Yu Siu Wing, Wang Ting Kong, Liu Asari Li, Kenneth Leung, uh, K. K. Kwok. Three minutes each. Yu Siu Wing. Uh, just now, Ms. Albert Chan said. And that the radical voice uh, will be silenced, as you all know. Leung Ho Hong is just stayed for four weeks, and after four weeks, he can come back to this council and continue his work. He can continue to attend uh, the ESC meetings. So there is no question of silencing his voice. Now he was convicted, and he was sentenced to jail. And he has to take the responsibility. I therefore do not support uh, the proposal. Mr. Wang Teng Kuang, it's just very simple. While I have not expected that Mr. Albert Chen wants to join uh, this uh, committee on the grounds of uh, this, it's really a big uh, stick for, uh, hitting us. He uh, has a heavy responsibility to speak. Um, as said by Mr. Yu, Mr. Leung is just jailed for four weeks. He has not uh, resigned from the ESC, and he has not asked uh, in writing, um, asked Mr. Chen to represent him. If he uh, has expected that, then he should have talked uh, to Ms. Albert Chen and the application should have been made more uh, more than a week ago. Uh, sorry, Lee. As said by Wang Ting Kuang, uh, the uh, DAB opposes the proposal or the application. As said earlier, Ms. Albert Chen chooses to apply. Obviously, uh, he is to replace Mr. Leung to move the motions and will continue uh, filibustering. We are against filibustering and therefore we do not support anyone who joins this ESC to continue to filibustering. The purpose is just uh, to waste the time of this ESC. We have no intention to silence anybody. Mr. Leung Ko Hong will continue to be a member. And if Mr. Chen has any view in respect of the ITB, he can give his views to various channels. Uh, he can go to the FC to express his view. So I don't think that the rejection of the application will silence uh, the voice of any uh, sector. You just um, exaggerating the issue with this political accusation. Mr. Kenneth Leung. Chairman, I just look at the uh, procedure. I will not uh, take any um, escalated uh, political accusations to be the grounds for supporting or rejecting the application. I noticed that the letter on the 9th of June by Mr. Chen uh, that he said that if Mr. Leung Ko Kong was released, uh, would, uh, is released and can attend the meeting, then he will withdraw uh, at that time. 
And while the pro-establishment is in favor of so-called balanced participation, and in view of the composition of various committees, including the PWSC, Mr. James Tian's application was approved, and previous uh, late applications were also approved. I see no strong reason for rejecting Mr. Albert Chen joining this ESC, though we know that he will continue to filibustering. This is not the factor I should take into account. I cannot second guess his intention, and I do not want to stigmatize Mr. Chen. I therefore support Mr. Chen joining the subcommittee. He claims that he is a representative of the Progressive Democrats, and I I, I support the application. Uh, Dr. K. K. Kwok. I support Mr. Chen's participation, as you can hear from the explanation earlier. Uh, Albert Chen and Leung Kok Hong uh um, the minority in this council and they uh, share out their work uh, in this council i hate to hate the allegation that he fully know that well we are not uh, the communist party and we are able to foretell what is the outcome of the court's decision um they are in fact um acted in a gallant manner and in fact um, everything is above board. Mr. Leung Kok Hong has moved uh, many motions, um, which have uh, or amendments which have reflected the view of the people. He is not trying to uh, drag the feet. Uh, there is no urgency uh, for setting up this so-called uh, for for um, establish um, for increasing the so-called establishment. And I hope, uh, Mr. Chen can continue the effort of Mr. Leung. When Mr. Leung Kok Hong returns, we should discuss. Uh, we should then discuss the motion. So I will. Um, if this application is not approved, I will ask for an adjournment. Uh, Mr. Ho Jun Yin, just now, Mr. Obi Chen has already uh, stated his intention. He wants to uh, replace Mr. Leung Kok Hong. And I have not heard that Mr. Leung Kok Hong wants anybody to represent him. Can um, one represent the other? Now they claim that they represent 12% of their uh, voters. In fact, they have failed uh, those who voted for them. Leung Kok Hong uh, went to the court. He didn't know what was the outcome of the decision, he should have prepared for that, and it is his responsibility. I therefore oppose that. According to the procedure, I, the, Mr. Leung Kok Hong, uh, Mr. Leung Kok Hong and LSD fully support uh, my application. If you say Leung Kok Hong doesn't know, you distort the fact. If you want to oppose it, say so, and don't put the blame on Leung Kok Hong. I just want to clarify this. Long hair and the LSD fully supports my application. They fully support uh, myself joining the ESC. Mr. Leung Kok Hong, I strongly oppose that. I don't give the reason. Let the public decide. I think uh, members of the public are watching this. What are the reasons for objecting? Uh, people have a fair assessment. Does any member wish to give their view? I give his view. Uh, according to the rules of procedure, if it is a late application, if it is not because of indisposition or absence from Hong Kong before the deadline, then the decision will have to be decided by the subcommittee. Do you accept Mr. Chen's application? Uh, um, a division. The bell will ring for five minutes.
请各位核对你嘅。Members, please check your vote. Display results. Four four nine against. The request is negatived. Sorry, the speaker is not coming through. The microphone is not on. All right, members. I have received from Doctor Kwakaki a motion. He moves that we should adjourn the discussion on EC seven. Doctor Kwakaki's motion is that, in accordance with paragraph thirty-two of the ESC procedure, I move an adjournment to the discussion on. Paper EC seven on the twenty eighth of May, Mr. Lam Kok Hong also moved a similar motion, which was then rejected. And then at the meeting on the ninth of June, Mr. Lam Kok Hong moved the motion again. In accordance with the rules of procedure, the same motion shouldn't be moved for a second time. So sorry, Doctor Kok, I cannot handle your motion. After handling Mr. Chan's request, let's continue with our meeting. The officials are entering the room. Last time I introduced them to you already, so I won't do so again today. So we'll proceed to handle paper EC seven. At the meeting on the ninth of June, I pointed out that Mr. Lam Kok Hong, in accordance with paragraph thirty-one A of the ESC procedure. Submitted 105 motions. 86 motions would be presented to members for deciding on whether or not to immediately proceed with handling the motion. 57 are outstanding, and during the meeting on the 9th of June, Mr. Lam Kok Hong submitted. A third batch of 44 motions. As Mr. Leung is unable to attend this meeting, this meeting will not handle the motion submitted by Mr. Leung in accordance with 31A of the SE procedure. So, altogether, there are two batches of outstanding motions which are returned to Mr. Leung Kwok Hong. So, any comments or questions on the motion submitted under paragraph 31A of the ESC procedure, Dr. Kwok, Madam Chairman? Although my adjournment motion had been rejected, as Mr. Long Kwok Hong's motions have already been paid tabled, as we have rejected Mr. Albert Chan's request. To be fair, we should continue to handle Mr. Long Kwok Hong's motions, which are about incomplete proposals from the administrations, which had been put forward without thorough considerations. In fact, the situation has changed. As Mr. Yu Si Wing said, we should give him an opportunity to air his views in the subcommittee. So it's not fair for us not to give him that chance. You said that you would not handle the motions any more because you did not process my adjournment motion. I regret that, Doctor Kwok. I acted in accordance with the ESE procedure. In his absence, we cannot handle Mr. Leung's motions. In fact, I've already handled and accepted many of his motions. I've read out the motions to the officials. I agree to some of the motions. For example, within six months or a year after the establishment of the ITB, detailed options and approaches, as well as measures, should be presented to us. Of course, you have the right to regret what had happened, but the responsibility of this subcommittee is to present recommendations to the finance committee. The final decision rests with the finance committee, which is not bound by us. In a few weeks' time, Mr. Leung will come back. 
He can express his views in the Finance Committee or on other occasions. He can also present his views to the Bureau Director, so his effort won't be wasted. Mr. Ari Lee, Madam Chairman, I support your decision. We oppose filibustering. I have to point out uh, that after the last meeting of this subcommittee, Mr. Long Kwa Hong was clear that there's a chance for him to be imprisoned. As Mr. Stephen Ho said, he should have made better arrangements. If it, he has not made good arrangements over this time, there's no good solution here. He should be held responsible. As regards the motion as to give back the right of Mr. Leung to move his motions, as he does not have other party members in this meeting, and we cannot continue to have this filibustering, so your decision is appropriate. Mr. Kenneth Chan, oh, sorry, Mr. Kenneth Leung. Madam Chairman, I noted your opinion. May I ask the Secretariat a question about the interpretation of paragraph 31A of the SE procedure? Well, I'm looking at the English version. A member may move a motion without notice. In fact, Mr. Long Kwok Hong has already submitted his motions to you, Mr. Chairman, before the meeting. As regards the word move, does it really mean that the member has to be personally present at a meeting before he can move a motion? Well, when Regina chaired the meetings in the past, it was she who read out the motions. So may I have uh, some advice from the secretariat or the legal advisor before we proceed? Andy or secretariat? As mentioned in paragraph 31A of the ESA procedure, the meeting is not yet formally process the motions. The meetings in the past were only discussing whether or not the subcommittee agrees to handle those motions. If the meeting so agrees, then the relevant motions will be handled. So should we not finish that proceeding first? Well, he's not here. It's not necessary for me to handle his motions. I read out the motions on behalf of him last time because uh, I really loved him. I saw that he was yawning. So I read out the motions for him. I consulted the Secretariat for Legal Advice. Our procedures were all right. Mr. UC Wing, Madam Chairman, just now Dr. Kwakaki misunderstood me. What I meant was that in a month's time, Mr. Long Kwok Hong can come back and continue with his work. Uh, that does not mean that I support his motions. So this is a clarification. All right, members, if there are no further comments, I'll put this to the vote. Will those in favor of the recommendations in paper EC 2014-15-7 please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. All right, the division bell will ring for one, uh, five minutes.
。請核對你睇。Please check the vote. The this rate is out. Fifteen for eleven again. Eleven for twelve. Eleven for two against. One abstention. Question is agreed. We now turn to agenda item number three or number two rather. A proposed creation of one supernumerary post of senior principal executive officer and one permanent post of principal executive officer D1 in the Labour and Welfare Bureau and one permanent post of administrative officer Strafe B in Student Financial Assistance Agency to be renamed as Working Family and Student Financial Assistance Agency on the 1st of March 2015. For implementing the low income working family allowance. The administration has already briefed the uh, subcommittee on poverty of the council on the 27th of May. To answer members' questions, we have Ms. Annie Tam, Permanent Secretary for Labour and Welfare, Ms. Donald Chan, Deputy Secretary, Ms. Jane Lee, Principal Assistant Secretary. Um, Ms. Winnie Lau, Senior Principal Executive Officer, and also uh, Ms. Angela Chang, Deputy Secretary of Education, and Ms. Germain Sin, Chief Executive Officer, Labor Department. The Chairman KK Fong of the Subcommittee on Poverty is not a member of this subcommittee, and he is not able to attend today's meeting. And then I will highlight. Uh, the discussion, according to the information provided by the Secretariat, on the 27th of May, the Subcommittee on Poverty discussed the um, low income allowance as a scheme and also the establishment and financial resources. Members generally supported the proposal, but some members have noted that for non single parent family applicant, the applicant has to fulfill the 192-hour rule in order to get an enhanced subs uh, allowance of $1,000. The administration asked to, uh, is asked to lower the threshold and um, unpaid sick leave should be included and also cash allowance should be given uh, to uh, those um, who have low incomes, who are chronically ill or disabled, and who, um, who would like to ask questions. Thank you, Pio, Kwakaki, Pusil Peng. Hands steady, please. Who else? Five minutes each. Thank you, Pio. Thank you, Chairman. I understand that uh, this is uh, given to the Student Financial Assistance Agency. Um, Instead of um, given to the SWD uh, for implementing the procedure because you want to avoid stigmatization, if you go to SWD, you need help. Uh, you, it is something like CSSA, and in order to change the uh, perspective or um, thinking, uh, you give it to the SFAA. That's uh, something commendable. Uh, you give it a new name. But in very in all the districts, the SWD has uh, social security offices, but the F SFAA only has an office in Changsha Wan. How can you enable uh, the applicants to apply in a more convenient manner? There may be a more th uh, there may be tens of millions of uh, tens of thousands of people applying for that. And also, we are concerned about the definition of uh, ch ch a child. Now, you want to have it pass the uh, FC before the summer recess. Um, people are also concerned about the working hours and definition of a child. Uh, yes, the Prime Secretary. I thank Mr. Ch Tang for the question. Like Mr. Ch Tang, we're very keen. To implement this and to facilitate the applicant, the applicants, we will uh, get a new office uh, to de to uh, deal with 
LWFA as applicants. We don't want to bother them. Uh, or the bother the uh, applicants. We also accept applications through different offices, including the offices of the SWD, and they can also get the form from the internet and then fill in the form and then hand the form to the various offices, including the social security offices of the SWD. Will collect the uh, these applications and then process them in our own office. If the information provided is in line what is required, and they have don't don't they don't have any special needs, just download the form from the internet, fill in the form, and then send in any of the offices that will accept such forms, and then we will collect the forms from these offices. Um, these offices do include the social security offices of the SWD. We can also uh, look into uh, other departments, say those applying for. Um, WITS and also other kinds of offices. As for the definition of child, as far as age is concerned, we ex we've explained that. Now we handle it this way. It is similar, or it's exactly the same as that of the SWD. If a uh, person is below 15, then uh, he or she is a child, but if uh, he is between 15 to 21, if he studies full time and not in a university, and then or uh, tertiary education institution, then the uh, child, uh, the, the person is still a child. As uh, the uh, he is a family member, then he is just regarded as an ordinary family member. Uh, that's the same as handling CSSA. After a year, we've given the undertaking. After a year, we will conduct a review, and we will pay attention to the smooth operation of the scheme, and also whether certain things should be improved. Um, Chairman, concerning the age of the child, definition of the age of child, fifteen and sixteen, they are. If they are studying, they they are children. If they have no work to do, then they are not uh, regarded as children. But if uh, you leave a child uh, at home unattended, the age is sixteen or below. But if you are fifteen, um, more than fifteen and less than sixteen, you are not regarded as a child in the present scheme. That isn't that inconsistent? I've already explained that at the previous meeting. Uh, we are handling this uh, this in the same way as SWD in handling CSSA. If a child is 15 uh, or above and is not studying full time and is not studying in a tertiary education institution, then he or she is a family member and will not be given a child allowance. But if he is in a tertiary institution, then uh, he is regarded as a child. Uh, yes, I, uh, Dr. K. K. Kwa, I support the LIWF, but I have one uh, very strong concern. You expect that the expenditure will be around $3.1 billion. About uh, 200,000 families will apply, according to your estimate. You may recall that uh, many kinds of allowances, whether it's the uh, TWIF or TBIS or the um, OALA, you expect a lot of applications. Uh, you get the money, get the money from us to set up offices, to build your establishment, uh, to build a huge team. You create many posts. You get one million, one hundred million dollars for that. And then, uh, in fact, the turnout is very low. So you just feeding uh, those uh, who have no work to do in your offices. Now you say you have a timetable. Now we give you the fund. Uh, will you uh, increase your manpower at one go, or you do it in phases? And how long will that supernumerary post be needed, or do these supernumerary posts be needed? Uh, after a peak of application, you don't need them anymore. We are very keen 
on saving public money. If you really want to help the low-income people, the money should be spent on the low-income people instead of spent on the officials or administrative costs. I uh, want to ask whether the increase uh, in establishment is in phases, and if the turnout is lower, how are you going to respond to that? Madam Secretary, like Mr. Kwok, we want to use government resources to help the needy, and we try to keep administrative costs or staff costs as low as possible. The um, official expenditure on officials is just 3.8 percent of uh, the allowance. It is a very low percentage. Having said that, um, some uh, to answer Mr. Cox's question, some posts are created in phases. Say. In the group, we have a uh, planning group, we have a preparatory group, and then we will set up the office. The planning group uh, uh, has a supernumerary post, and that will only last until the 31st of March 2016. After the end of March 2016, this post will disappear, and the planning group will disappear. As for the preparatory group, now we add the manpower in phases. Having obtained the money, uh, we'll only uh, start increasing manpower from October until March next year. As for the other members joining the office, they'll also be taking up their offices in phase. At the moment, the office will be established in phase, so there will be two phases. Of course, we now envisage that about 200,000 households will be eligible. We are of the view that in the initial stage, the workload would be more, because the 200,000 households may like to apply early. If there are not that many households applying, for the NCSC posts, they are under a time frame, a time frame of three years. So where and when necessary, there's room for maneuvering because these are non-civil service posts. As for civil service posts, members need not worry because they are normally under the general grades. There are vacancies in other departments. So we can transfer these posts to other departments. So there's flexibility. We'll continue to monitor the situation. First of all, recruitment and appointment will be phased. Secondly, if the reality turns out beyond our expectation, we do have flexibility and room for maneuvering. I'd like to have a supplementary paper on the number of posts and manpower. Well, 3.28 is the administrative cost, right? Is this an undertaking? First of all, have they tried their very best to reduce administrative costs? I want that to be as little as possible because we would like to assist the low-income households. Well, what if, in reality, they're going to spend less than $3.1 billion? Will they undertake to cut down the costs? Well, the 372 non-directorate civil service posts, as mentioned in the paper, will cost us about $118 million, about 3.8 percent of the total of $3.1 billion. Well. If the reality turns out not to be what we're expecting, that is, uh, there will be less applicants and our workload is lighter, then for NCSC posts and civil service posts, we'll try to make adjustments correspondingly as a follow-up. Can you give us a supplementary paper on the phased approach? the details. So can you give us a paper? Yes. 
Mr. Pun Xiuping, thank you, Madam Chairman. I, of course, support this low-income working family allowance scheme. When I look at the time frame proposed in the paper, I'm a bit worried. You envisage uh, that it will take you 15 to 18 months to prepare, and you have to recruit employees and implement the scheme. But then on the 4th of July, you're going to the Finance Committee for funding approval, and you s accept applications only in the fourth quarter. I, of course, want you to expedite the program. I don't want any slippage for this scheme. So have you made preparation for the scheme? Can you expedite the implementation? Because this scheme is very much needed by the low-income households. Can you expedite the program? In fact, we very much understand that the low-income households would like to apply for the allowance as early as possible. In paragraph 7, of the paper, and in note 11, we point out that a lot of work have to be done. The details are in paragraph 7. We would like to expedite the whole program, so we're adopting a dual approach. But certain steps will take time, and we do need support from the Finance Committee for funding before we can implement the scheme. In the paper, we mentioned that we have to rent office, refurbish it and put in the IT equipment. And in phases, we'll have to recruit staff to do the work. Without the funding approval from the FC, we cannot start negotiation with the landlord for renting of the office. So without the office, we cannot have a renovation and refurbishment. We cannot have IT equipment. We dare not recruit people because uh, without money, we dare not recruit people. So we're adopting a two-pronged approach. We're acting on the operational details. The Civil Service Bureau has seconded Ms. Lau to us. So before the post is created, it's a counter to us. But that post is to go by August if you don't support us today. But the operational details have started. The policy directions have been turned into operational details. And we're also soliciting help from departments concerned for the renting of an office. So we would like to have FC approval for funding. We need 15 to 18 months. So we've already tried our best to suppress that timetable. We, of course, do not know what will happen to the filibuster in the Finance Committee. Can you not use the existing SWD officers as a backup? Mr. Christopher Chung, my question is similar. Now, this scheme will be put under the Student Assistance, Financial Assistance Office. And apart from the directorate posts, 300 non-directorate posts have to be created. As mentioned, SWD networks and resources will be mobilized. Why is it that you have to start from scratch when you need 300 odd more people and you need an office? Why don't you use the SWD network and offices? It may not be necessary to recruit 300 more people. Administration, Madam Chairman, we've examined how to proceed most efficiently. Number one, as explained in the paper, we're of the view that to collaborate with the Student Financial Assistance Agency is substantiated. In the long run, we have to see how we can make better use of the resources for both officers. So it's efficient. Even if we are to mobilize the resources of the SWD, we cannot save the office, so to speak. For the these 372 non-directorate civil service posts, 
we cannot cut the number any further. In any case, we need to find a new office. And in the existing SWD offices, there's no such big office for us, and they don't have the manpower for us. So wherever we put the office, we cannot save on these posts. We need an office. So when members deliberate on this issue, rest assured that we've uh, thought about this thoroughly, and there's a merit in collaborating with the Student Financial Assistance Agency. Oh, yes, I understand that you are to meet the needs of so many low-income households. But if you put that under the SWD first and the de develop the scheme further, then it will be better to start from scratch. Madam Chairman, we've explored the feasibility of using the existing SWD establishment. As I explained just now, we still need an office. We still need enhanced manpower level. We still need to refurbish the office. We need to put in the IT equipment, and we have to develop a new IT system. Because the existing SWD IT system cannot cope with the new circumstances. The existing system can cope with the existing work only. So if we are to go along that direction, it will take even longer because the SWD already has its own personnel, its own officers and equipment. So we need to develop a new IT system. We've already started the work. So the other approach won't be able to save time. That is, uh, if we are to use the existing resources of the SWD, we won't be able to save time. Any more questions from members? If not, I'll put this item to the vote. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think uh, the question is agreed by a majority of uh, members voting. I declare the question passed. Do we need any division? Do we need any division? Last quarter? No. So, for item 7, we had a division, but for this paper, we don't need a division. All right. The recommendations in paper 10 are endorsed. Next, uh, paper EC 2014-158. Members are invited to recommend to Finance Committee the creation of the following permanent post in the Leisure and Cultural Services Department with effect from the date of approval. That is, one senior principal executive officer to be offset by the deletion of one principal executive officer to cope with the substantial growth in the responsibilities of the DS. From the Home Affairs Department with uh, Ms. Wong yut Hua, the Principal Assistant Secretary, Mrs. Betty Fong from the LCSD, also Ms. Long Man Yi from the LCSD. As uh, the Chairman of the Home Affairs Panel is not a member of this uh, subcommittee, he cannot attend this meeting. So in accordance with the materials prepared by our Secretariat, I just want to highlight the salient points discussed in that panel. On the 12th of May, the Home Affairs panel discussed the proposals in the paper. Some members supported the recommendations, one member opposed. He is of the view that just to upgrade a PEO to an SPEO, may not be sufficient to satisfy the planning details for infrastructure under the LCSD. It may not be necessary either to resolve uh, human resources management and planning problems within the LCSD. The SPEO would be the coordinator of the projects to handle resources applications, monitor progress, and establish a database to promote planning and development transfers under the LCSD. But for different regions and functions in relation to LCSD projects, 
It will also come under the post. Mr. Tankapia and Mr. UC Wing would like to ask questions. Any more? Dr. Kwokaki. All right, five minutes each. Mr. Tankapia first. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Well, what do they mean by priority? Well, every time when we had exchanges with the District Council, we always heard requests for priority. But there's no clarity about this point. Now, it's very clear that we'll need more housing units. And then we heard figures about how many housing units we'll have in the next five years or next ten years. Well, sometimes the LCSD might have earmarked a certain site for culture or leisure or recreation purposes, but nothing was built. And in certain cases, they didn't even have a site. So if you make a division on the basis of population, you understand that there are slip the the slippage for many projects. The LCSD had to beg for sites in order that they would make progress. All right, is one post for one post an upgrading to a senior post, but can the problems be solved by doing so? No, just uh, having a senior official cannot solve all the problem. But as a director, the um, LCSD is now uh, working on 80 projects. We need a dedicated officer to look after these projects throughout the territory. And these projects are leisure and sports facilities. Now is looked after by six AD and two uh, CEOs, uh, I mean uh, chief executive officers. Uh, Mr. Tang says that there is shortage of cultural and recreation facilities in many districts. We know that, but there are 80 projects waiting in the line. We need to set priority. Uh, the HKPSG is one factor of consideration, and we look at the population, the distribution, and usage rate. Uh, also, other factors. In handling so many factors, we need a, a focal point. We need someone to decide on um, ranking the uh, priorities. And the AD, administ uh, AD uh, administration is able to help us to. Uh, set priority. The resources are limited. We cannot have all the projects conducted in one go. We need to set priorities. Eighty projects, I heard that, but we have not such information in the paper. Please give us the list of eighty projects. Let each district know whether it is on the list or not. On setting priority, nobody is against setting priority, and there is a need for a senior official to do the coordination. But what are the criteria? You have to be transparent. Okay, the third point is, even if you are allowed to create a post, there are eighty items, and some think there some may think that there may be one uh, eight hundred more. But how are you going to achieve uh, complete these 80 projects, not 800? Now we can provide information. More than half of the 80 projects are projects left over by the two municipal councils. Every half a year or year, we submit a report to this council, and there are also new projects proposed by the districts. It's transparent. The district councils are aware well of these projects. As for criteria of consideration, the HKPSG is one of the important reference. Um, distribution of population is another factor. Although needs can be uh, have already been met, as far as numbers are concerned, uh, we may need we can provide more. Uh, say, for example, a small library. As for usage rate, if the usage rate is low. 
and say the usage rate is just uh, 80, uh, 60, uh, 50 or 60 percent on average, then adding uh, more uh, similar facilities uh, will not help a lot. But if the usage rate is nearly 100, then we can, of course, give priority to that. As for a heated swimming pool, we want to have that in each district. We can provide information after the meeting. How many years do you need? I'm not able to answer you. The resources we get every year is different. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, the LCSD, neither the LCSD nor the HAB uh, can uh, call the shots. Well, it will be more than 10 years, I think. Ms. Yu Wing. Concerning the uh, grounds for upgrading, paragraph 4 uh, said that uh, in 2006 there was restructuring of the LCSD. Uh, the establishment was reduced from 9,500 in 2000 to 7,400 in 2006. The department was downgraded. In para 7, it is said that after March 2015, the strength of the LCSD will be increased to 9,199 posts. Uh, in view of the workload, uh, the department will be upgraded. There are many reasons, say, uh, in terms of manpower, in terms of duties and responsibilities, um, delegated authority, so on and so forth. There are many government departments. Is there a uniform standard? Under what circumstances can the post be upgraded? Say, for example, when manpower is raised, has reached a certain level, then the department can be upgraded. I don't know whether it is the decision, the upgrading decision is done by the LCSD or is it according to a uniform standard. Thank you, um, Chairman. When there is a change in post, whether it's an addition or an upgrade, we have to get through the CSP. The uh, CSP will look at the functions and the ranking support, whether the nature of work demands an upgrade. In our case, if we compare ourselves with similar departments in terms of manpower, ours is a uh, weaker department, so to speak. FEHD is bigger than us. Uh, health department has a smaller number of member than us, but the departmental secretary is a D2 uh, supported by a chief EO. But in us, we have 9,000 uh, civil servants and 1,000 or so um, non civil servants. Our departmental secretary is only a D1. And the uh, head of the um, the, the, the departmental secretary uh, has to uh, do a lot of work. It seems that you compare with other departments, they have less manpower, and yet they are of their, their the uh, departmental secretary is of a higher grade. Now, of course, uh, when uh, since uh, since the uh, departmental secretary is. Um, Leading so many civil servants, it shouldn't be a junior one. The leader shouldn't be a junior one. But I think you should set a standard. You cannot just look at the number. Uh, well, if you, uh, you you have you must have certain criteria and rules instead of just by a certain uh, kind of uh, personality. Uh, when there is a need, uh, when you feel the need, then I will approve. I don't think that's the approach. Uh, Chairman, that's not so simple. If we want to upgrade a post or create a post, we have to go through many hurdles. We have to get resources first. We have to get the approval of the CSP. The CSP considers whether it is uh, approval or it, is, uh, it can be approved or not. They don't just look at the manning scale. How many people and uh, what is the rank? Um, we have 100, more than 100 uh, ranks and 40, more than 40 grades in terms of recruitment, training, and other personnel management matters. Um, the matters are very complicated. It's not just the quality, quantity, but also quality, quantity, 
and quality and also changes in the circumstances. We also have to go through the Standing Commission uh, before we can uh, put the application before you. Is there any hard and fast rule? I believe not. The CSB has to consider the case according to its own merits. The factors I've already mentioned, the change in quantity and quality as for the head of administration. Uh, the matter um, has to be uh, dealt with by this head, um, the nature of work, the workload, so on and so forth. Uh, matter of concern, say um, the person is responsible for uh, personnel, uh, strengthening personnel management, and also looking after capital works. And now the chief education, chief executive officer is not able uh, to uh, do uh, manpower planning in the department. Um, the uh, deputy secretary of the uh, civil service, administrative and personnel management um, um, very complicated. Um, when we look at the, gray, the, the the ranking, we look at the number of people uh, to, um, under uh, supervision, under the supervision of this post. But number is not the only concern, and we don't just look at the manning scale, as said by the director. We also consider the uh, different grades and ranks under the management of this um, deputy uh, departmental secretary. Uh, and also the nature of work of the grains and grades and the department at large are uh, our concern as well. Now in this case, uh, the CSB has looked into that and has made reference to the uh, situation of other government departments which are of similar uh, situation and we think the present upgrade is appropriate. Dr. K. K. Kwok, Chairman, I support the upgrading, but I still have a question. Well, in fact, they are not doing what they should. Concerning the uh, Victoria Park swimming pool, um, the um, swimmers are complaining that the sign is not user friendly. They spent so much money, spent so much time, and they made it a mess. I'm talking about the Victoria Park swimming pool. And there are, and there, there were projects left over from the municipal councils. Many years have elapsed since the um, termination of the two municipal councils. And the projects are still outstanding. They have just woken up. Uh, they uh, have found that they have neglected the LCSD. If that's the case, then I really found that the LCSD has given a raw deal. You have been ignored by the Policy Bureau. Now, there is the Kwai Chung Park. They gave the undertaking to Kwai Ching District residents. A lot of outstanding items are there. It's still a mess. Is still dilapidated. You don't even put it on the list. Why is it so? Apart from the Kwai Chung Park, there are other recreation and sports physics facilities which are not on the list because the list will be too long. There are many uh, in the bottom of the drawers. Uh, how many of them? Can you tell us? Concerning the design of projects, in the design phase, we consult the trade. Say, for example, swimming pool, we consult the um, users, the swimming associations. But for the Victoria Park, it is uh, the reprovisioning of a big swimming pool complex uh, on existing ground, and we cannot cut the trees, and therefore. Uh, it was rather uh, crowded, but there are certain improvement works uh, that will be done to it. It is not that we have no progress of the 139 uh, municipal council projects. More than half, 67, have been completed, and some are under construction. 
As for advanced works, we are working on ten items. As for the remaining, for one reason or another, such as uh, the view of the district council, which says that um, it, is, it should not be, it cannot be, uh, it may not be given priority, or so some for some projects, sites are not available. Uh, there will be forty projects which will be implemented. Of the eighty uh, projects in hand, forty of them. Uh, former municipal council projects. As for Kai Chung Park, we have initiated again the uh, process. We consulted the Kai Ching District Council. Uh, we are going to build a, a golf driving range, a cricket um, a golf cra uh, practicing range, a uh, cricket field, and. Um, um, these uh, it is in the uh, eighty items. She has not answered my question. First, whether the policy bureau has neglected your department, has not put enough importance to your department. Now you said Kwai Chung Park. Uh, we'll go ahead. How many are uh, in the bottom of your drawers? And can you provide us the information before the next FC? Uh, the items that you want to consult, then we can be informed whether you are going to do that or not. And also, we need the uh, expected completion date. Concerning uh, new items, you say you will do this and do that, many of them. Uh, Tong Tao Industrial Area, Taipo uh, Cultural Center. Uh, or civic center, rather. When will you uh, complete that? Uh, do you have any timetable? And with the adding of this post or upgrading of this post, how uh, sooner can the works be completed? And how many projects are still in your drawers? In fact, the uh, secretary has attached importance to our work. But as you know, there are so many projects in the 18 districts. Big and small priority has to be set. Together with all the policy bureaus and departments, we're trying to compete for resources, and we have to set priorities. Mr. Tang mentioned some information in relation to various projects. Those in the enclosures are only examples. We've not exhausted all the examples because there are 80 projects. And sometimes we haven't even completed planning, so we cannot give you a completion date. It doesn't matter. You just uh, give us as much information as possible. If you have difficulties, just tell us. Well, we'll try as far as possible to provide the information. Let me also say something. I support this proposed upgrading because you have so many mega projects. I hope that the LCSD will review its market policies. I know that you're not going to build any more markets. Well, some are related to you. For example, in Chen Wan, last week the complaints division met with some Chen Wan residents. In certain markets, uh, there's no meat on sale. It's only for storage, and the upper floors were vacant. So they would also like to have upgrading of certain facilities. Libraries under you, but not elderly services, reading rooms, libraries, a lot of community facilities and leisure and cultural facilities. They need, well, this is rather complicated. It must be an interdepartmental exercise. I think you should ask your bureau director to consider how to redevelop uh, these markets. Some students don't have a place to study. Can you follow up on this? Well, our home affairs colleagues are also here. We'll go back and see how we can revitalize our markets and make use of their facilities. Well, some market spaces were used for storage only. And then for upgrading of this PEO to SPEO, will you do it by way of promotion or transfer? Well, it should be a transfer because the incumbent colleague is an acting PEO, so we need a new colleague. Any more co questions from members? If not, I'll put the recommendations to the vote. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Unanimously agreed.
Do we need a division in the Finance Committee? Dr. Kwakaki? No, I'm not asking for separate voting. I just want them to provide all the papers. Then I don't need uh, to separate any item from the other items. Will they need to provide a paper? Yes, I agree. They are using certain facilities together with the FVHD, and sometimes the situation was not good. So if they can do something, they'll be able to honor their undertakings to the residents. Chinking Circuit is an example. In relation to the example cited by you, we'll follow up with the FVHD and the Home Affairs Bureau. Sometimes uh, is an interdepartmental case, so we need to have some coordination under the Bureau concerned. We'll follow up on this. So let's proceed to the next item, that is item number 5, EC 2014-59, proposed creation of one supernumerary post of Chief Engineer, D1, in the Civil Engineering and Development Department up to the 31st of March 2019 to strengthen its capability in driving the implementation of the mega integrated basement and government infrastructure projects for West Kowloon Cultural District. On the 28th of May, the administration consulted the Joint Subcommittee on WKCD. In attendance today with Mr. Han Chi Kang, Director of C Civil Engineering and Development, Mr. Norman Hung, Project Manager for Kowloon, also from CEDD, and Mr. Wan Man Leung, Project Manager from the Home Affairs Bureau. As the Joint Subcommittee Chairman, Mr. Christopher Chung is not a member of this subcommittee and is unable to attend this meeting. In accordance with the materials prepared by the Secretariat, I'll highlight the salient points of discussion in that Joint Subcommittee. The Joint Subcommittee at its meeting on the 20th of May discussed the Administration's proposals on the building of this integrated basement and a supernumerary post of chief engineer was proposed. High costs were the concern of members at that meeting. Some members asked the administration to consider putting or reviewing the concept of putting all the vehicular traffic in the basement, and members were also concerned whether or not the integrated basements could be connected to attain connectivity. Members would also like to clarify whether or not the integrated basements would be put under the management of the WKCDA. Air quality and temperature were also members' concerns. Members did not oppose to the submission of those proposals to the ESC. Who would like to speak? Dr. Kokaki, Mr. UC Wing, any more? Five minutes each, Dr. Kwok. Chairman, WKCD, oh, I really don't know what to say. When they sought funding from the FC, they said that $21.6 billion would be enough. Uh, once again, they've uh, cheated the public and the LegCo. Now, the, the WKCDA told us uh, that for phases one and two, it should be all right, but for phase three, they would not have enough money. They are not trustworthy in so far as WKCD is concerned. Well, please tell us the truth today. I believe next year you tell us something different. For Liantang project, the estimated costs could differ by 50% when it comes to actual costs. All right, if we don't give you the post, you won't be able to cope. If we, if we give you the post, understand that phase one should be all right. What about phase two? What about phase three? How much? shortfall you're talking about. And overall speaking, how much you need? Well, the government is just like uh, a dark hole. 
you concealed a lot of things from us. Members of the public may complain that we're not monitoring you closely enough, and the drawings are ever changing. For this basement, sometimes it was deeper, sometimes shallower, and the XRL might cause slippage. There were omissions. If your investigation work was more accurate, then you would not have so much unforeseeable elements. Will there be further slippage? Are you going to spend even more money? Director, I'd like to thank Dr. Kwok for his questions. Number one, concerning the cultural facilities for the 20 odd billion dollars, how many phases can we complete? Well, let me first say that uh, with this supernumerary post of uh, chief engineer, it's mainly for the basement, the, the integrated basement. As for the various phases, I'll defer to Mr. Wen, the project manager, for the details in a moment. Dr. Kwok said that the XRL may have to interface with this basement. Will that impact on the cost and time frame of the basement? For this issue, we have set up a dedicated task force for this integrated basement. The CEDD will start to do planning and construction as well as proceed with the details. We would try to establish the ded dedicated task force as soon as possible. Then we'll be able to come up with some preliminary proposals. Last time, we said that excluding the government infrastructure, the sum should be enough. Dr. Kwok was correct. We're not 100% sure about the time frame in relation to the handover of the site to us by the XRL. So we'll look into the time frame and the costs. Well, can you give us a rough estimation? Perhaps I should defer to Mr. Wan, the project manager. Concerning the WKCD project, Concerning the facilities under batches 1, 2, and 3, in 2008, uh, the WKCDA was established with $21.6 billion, and part of that sum was for cultural facilities. That is $15.7 billion. We envisage that for the first batch, like the Shichi Center, M Plus Museum, Park, and Theatres, we may need around $9 billion. For batch two, for the contemporary art performance venue, the medium size theatre, and the promotion of certain WKCDA projects in relation to retail, catering, and entertainment facilities, through which we're going to make some profits to support cultural and art activities. But we have uh, to spend money on the construction of those facilities. Overall speaking, we'll need around $18.1 billion for batches one and two. For the Grand Theatre, the Music Centre, and so forth under batch three, at the moment we don't have a detailed timetable. Funding for 
art and culture facilities under WKCD. This sum approved uh, will only be sufficient for batches one and two. Mr. Yu Si Wei, Chairman, we need a group of people to monitor the projects under WKCD. A. With 12 persons at the moment, we have to understand that WKCD is also a government project. And in recent times, problems had emerged as for slippage, quality of works, and so forth. To what extent will they have to be held liable? And then Mrs. Carrie Lam, CS for administration, she is your boss, and you are now saying that you are going to monitor the WKCD projects. If there are problems, how are you going to resolve this conflict of interest issue? If you have to seek instructions to whom you will seek instructions, will it be fair? Are you going to change decisions? Do you have to seek further instruction from your boss? And will your boss be subject to pressure such that he or she does not make a decision? Director, whether or not there will be duplication of effort, WKCDA will not duplicate our efforts. They focus on WKCD, the responsible for the facilities there. As for our dedicated task force and the supernumerary post, they're mainly for the planning, design and construction of the integrated basement. Of course, we need interface but there won't be duplication of effort. We'll keep in close liaison with the WKCDA. For certain works, we may need to seek their help. Later, we'll go to the PWSC for funding for advanced work. We may have to enlist the assistance of the WKCDA. Anyway, this dedicated task force will oversee all the works projects. We are responsible for management, of course. Well, will there be any conflict of interest? The position of the government is very clear. We're duty bound to oversee the whole project in terms of quality, safety, funding, and so forth. We don't want overspending. We want to work within the time frame. We're duty bound to oversee the project in those aspects. So we must attain the objectives originally set for WKCD. Chairman, in recent times, we learned that They had to seek supplementary funding because of slippage. Well, monitoring is very important. They're duty bound to oversee the project in terms of possible slippage or overspending. I don't know who is ultimately responsible. Ultimately, they may have to come back to LegCo for further funding. Well, I agree to the proposals here. I agree that there should be 12 persons. Now, if there is a delay, if supplementary funding is needed, what sort of responsibility would they take up? Uh, the director, well, you cannot say generally. We have to consider the nature of the case. If there is overspending, if there is a delay, we have to find out the reasons. We cannot uh, uh, give a general uh, comment. If there is a serious delay, we have to explain to the council why there is a delay, why there is overspending, and who uh, should uh, be held responsible. Uh, it may not be the case uh, that uh, we have failed our work in terms of supervision. There may be other reasons. We cannot give a general comment. Now, if there is a problem, they need to explain. They 
or they just uh, pass a bug and ask the boss uh, to explain how are they going to deal with uh, the arrangement of responsibilities. At the end of the day, it is the duty of the controller. I will have to be responsible. The whole team will have to explain why there is a delay, why there is overspending, if there is. Mr. Chung Kok Pan. Now concerning overspending, we can say that overspending is a rule by billions of dollars. Well, if you spend the money on education, on health care, and helping the poor, that will be more worthwhile. Now you say uh, this uh, post is to be created because of the complexity of the project and also the urgency of the project. Now there will be a link of the basement, uh, a link between the basement and the ex ex express rail. The express rail uh, will be delayed until uh, 2017. So how urgent is the matter? Uh, the express rail can only be linked up uh, with your basement after three years. How urgent is it? We are aware that there is a delay with the express rail. We are talking to them on the implication on the mega basement and the timetable in particular. Now they will hand over uh, the sites starting from 2016, uh, but we still have to work out the timetable, the detailed timetable with the uh, MTRCL. There will be a link with the um, X -ray, uh, express rail, but it's not just a link. Uh, there is also the loading of the station, express rail station. That delay will affect the timetable of the mega basement. We have to talk to them in detail. Um, assuming that in 2015, the express rail is able to hand over the site to WKCD, then when do you expect uh, the works can be completed? Now you say 2016. If there is a further delay, then how can WKCD um, go after the uh, express rail for compensation. Well, they said that they mentioned 2016, and we don't have the details. Our construction timetable has to fit in with their timetable. Now, with the uh, south station of the express rail, uh, the timetable has yet to be finalized. We have to talk to them. As for responsibility, I think that, uh, there's a need to discuss, and we have to discuss uh, with them in the next phase. Uh, Dr. K.K. Kwok, your second round, three minutes. Chairman, I really don't understand this. W uh, with continuous delay, there will be continuous increase in cost. The express rail uh, will be extended to 2016, 2017, and they can only give you the site in 2015, so your works will be delayed. Why is it so? Can certain items be done earlier? The basement is important, but what about those on the ground? Can they be done first? Then you can provide cultural facilities to the public earlier. And I don't know whether that can save a little bit of cost. You expect that the uh, longer the delay, the higher the cost. Is it possible to um, build uh, something on the ground first? And what facilities can be built first? Now you will. Uh, give, uh, say, the catering and other things to the uh, private sector. Can that bit be given earlier so that um, it will not be uh, made um, unfinished? As for the delay caused by the express rail, I think this council is looking at it. Why there is such a delay with the express rail, I, am, um, I don't have any answer. I'm not quite sure about it. In fact, we are 
working on the basement in phases. We are working on the western side already. I'm not. I'm talking about those on the ground. Can you um, do something? Build something on the ground on top of the uh, on the ground first. That's our thinking. Say on the side of M plus, we want to work it faster. Mr. Wan, uh, the project manager. Now concerning the catering facilities, in the C G center and in M plus, um, we will build some there. I mean the catering facility says for the art plaza. Uh, it's linked up with M plus. The part that is linked up with M plus can also be built earlier, and also um, the um, theater can also be built earlier, and then uh, the residential development and office development are under consideration. And the WKCDA is now considering speeding up the construction of the catering facilities. There will be um, twenty odd percent of the total uh, catering facilities. Now, if the development of the Arts Plaza can be completed by twenty twenty, uh, that will help. To energize the western part, it is linked up with the park. People will be able to have a a uh, part of the uh, WKCD. We call it a minor or mini WKCDA, uh, WKCD, and the uh, catering facilities will provide some revenue to support culture and art activities. Now, since no one has uh, asked for the floor, considering the three things: your park, your catering and revenue-making facilities, and the major works such as M Plus and the CG Center, do they need to wait for the basement? If they don't, then are you already working on them? These are now being worked on. M plus, and also the uh, cultural facilities are not affected, and we have completed the piling of CG Center. So the works are going on actively. They don't need uh, to wait for the basement. No, they don't. We need to wait for the main basement. As for the uh, work by the CDD. The main basement is between the CG Center and M Plus. Now, when you come to this council, you gave a earlier timetable. Uh, you don't need to wait for the uh, basement. So you have delayed as far as um, your works are concerned. You don't. Now, in comparison with 2008, uh, there was a delay. There is a delay by how many years? According to 2008, when the WKC Day was formed, it was expected that by 2015 all facilities were completed. How many years of delay? Then tell me. Now, if we uh, compare that with the first facility, the CG Center, we hope to complete it by late 2016, early 17. M plus museum. We expect it to be the end of 2017. In comparison with the plan in 2008, at that time the whole area will be completed by 2015. So the whole should be completed by 2015. Now the first is one six. 21, 2016, and then second, 2017. There is a serious delay. How much money have the taxpayers um, to pay more? Now the 21.6 billion dollars are for the facilities of um, WKCDA. The increase was from 15.7 billion to 18 billion dollars. Then uh, they are only eight, uh, adequate for the first and second batches. So we will have to pay about twenty billion more. 
Well, at present, we don't have a new overall uh, cost uh, estimate. Well, the people of Hong Kong have been shortchanged. Mr. Kwok, I understand your feeling. I share your feeling. We uh, we feel it. Uh, we're really upset, but it is not uh, because of uh, these officials. Now there were ten mega projects proposed by Mr. Zhang, and there was not enough manpower. We faced our we have faced our capacity constraint. I have some comments. I thank the officials uh, for telling us the progress. Are you building Empress already? We are working on the design. Some public works will be conducted with M plus together with the funding. Then the uh, foundation works together with government works will commence in August. Concerning M plus, uh, you will soon start your works. I don't want to delay it. According to my understanding, the scale of M plus is really big. It is equivalent to the total space of the museums in Hong Kong plus 50 percent more. Do we have enough exhibits? Do we need to scale it down? The design is a uh, is main uh, that the main design is completed and we are doing the tendering for the foundation works. We want to start works as soon as possible. If everything goes smoothly, works uh, it will be completed at the end of 2017. It's a big museum. The scale is big. Total uh, floor space more than a million square feet. The site is very big. Well, I'm not familiar with exhibitions. The WKCDA uh, have experts who are doing the planning. Okay, then if members don't have questions, I will put the proposal to the vote. Those in favor, please raise their hands. No objection. The um, item is endorsed. Members, four items today have been endorsed with a big majority. Do you want any uh, item to be separately voted on at the EFC? Do we need this? No. Uh, only the ITB proposal will be separately voted by the FC. Okay. And on another item, Dr. Kwok asked for additional information. Yes, only one item will be voted upon separately. If there's no objection, we'll not discuss the remaining items afresh. For the Finance Committee, as you all know, they usually vote upon ESC papers in one batch. So this should be the last meeting in this quarter. Thank you.